Okay, so let's uh, uh, finish up this uh, part by looking at an animation. We have been looking at wind belts, doldrums, cross latitudes, polar latitudes, and the various uh, winds and the pressures. When we look at the animation, we'll see exactly how things actually change as the sun moves north-south. Uh, I've got some complaints that the audio is not uh, loud enough, but if that is what you also feel, then please leave a comment and I'll see what uh, can be done. Uh, so let me find my uh, cursor. Here it is. So let's look uh, by uh, the Hadley cell circulation. Uh, we'll start with that. So here it is, um, two views. Uh, you have the uh, atmospheric view here, zonal, mean, meridional uh, section. You have heating, warm temperature, uh, low pressure, rising air, uh, con uh, expanding and condensing, hitting the tropopause, moving towards the poles and sinking in the subtropics, right? So we have added a little complication here that I have ma not mentioned thus far. The air seems to be going to a lower height in the atmosphere as we go north. So let me just clear that up a little bit here and we'll see it again. The tropopause I showed it was some average profile of the atmosphere, but actually it turns out that as to you go to higher latitudes, the air is colder and denser, so the atmosphere actually fits into a smaller height, which means the tropopause, which is about 10 to 12 kilometers high in the tropics, keeps dropping and reaches uh, about 8 kilometers as you reach higher latitudes and that is kind of what is being shown here. But essentially you see warm air rising, uh, moving poleward, sinking uh, at the subtropical high, converging back into the uh, low pressure region and uh, the cycle continues. And we want to see how the uh, seasonal cycle uh, works with this. Where is my seasonal cycle? We'll see that in a minute. So let's develop the tropical and mid-latitude components of uh, the circulation. So here is the intertropical conversion zone. I mentioned it a couple of times. What is it? Basically the northeast trades and the southeast trades are converging into this warm low pressure region at the surface where the air is rising and Wherever the air is rising, you get also rainfall because the air rises, expands, condenses, and rainfall happens. Intertropical conversion zone, which basically is the zonal belt or the meridional belt along the entire tropics, which is where the maximum heating happens, lowest pressure happens, rising motion happens, and rainfall happens. We will see this uh, several times in different contexts, but that is the intertropical conversion zone. It's called intertropical because we'll see that when we add the asymmetry of the land uh, being more uh, in the northern hemisphere and so on, the uh, ITCZ or the intertropical conversion zone actually turns out to be slightly towards the northern hemisphere uh, along most longitudes. Okay, So that's why it's called intertropical and not tropical conversion zone. And the high latitude components of this uh, cells, um, you will see that the Hadley cell is leaking some air to higher latitudes and they are converging here at the uh, subpolar uh, latitudes that we talked about where rainfall happens. So there is a low pressure band uh, at that latitude around uh, 60 north. So you have one in the tropics and one uh, at 60 north and in the middle you have this uh, subtropical high and then we have the polar high. So you can see the polar high is pushing air out then Coriolis is, is acting on them and they are becoming polar easterlies and the uh, winds to the north of the subtropical uh, high are basically prevailing westerlies as we said but they are somewhat uh, southwesterly, so they are going from the south and west towards the north and east, so southwesterlies. Nonetheless, that's kind of the story, and if we add the upper atmospheric circulation to this, you will see that the air that is uh, going towards the uh, 
subtropical high from the tropical rising region is also going to be affected by the Coriolis and going to be deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere to the left in the southern hemisphere which means you end up with this so-called subtropical jet stream which is moving from west to east in both hemispheres because the left deflection and the right deflection in the southern and northern hemisphere uh, respectively end up pushing them both from west to east and you end up with this very well known polar jet stream at about 60 knots. This is the jet stream that gets talked about when you are flying around. The airplanes want to use this very very strong winds almost uh, 200 kilometers per hour uh, in the upper atmosphere so that the tailwind can take you much faster going east. Obviously when you're going west you're going to have headwinds and it's going to take much longer. So if you're flying from New York to California it can take much longer than if you're flying from California to New York. Okay, So that's kind of the story of the uh, atmospheric circulation. The seasonal cycle is uh, not on here, which should be, but I'll find it uh, later on and show you the seasonal cycle. Basically, as the sun moves north and south, the entire intertropical convergence zone moves north and south, and these pressure centers end up becoming uh, smaller and larger based on the season. So, in the summer, for example, in the no northern hemisphere summer, when the ITCZ moves north with the sun, the Hadley cell is stronger, the sinking motion is stronger, the subtropical high can get uh, larger and stronger, and the subtropical low, uh, of the subpolar low, can get smaller, whereas in the winter, the subpolar low can get much bigger and occupy much of the space in the northern hemisphere, and the subtropical high will shrink. We will see that later on in another animation when we look at rainfall. We haven't introduced the rainfall with the intertropical convergence zone yet. I'm going to stop this here, and we will uh, move to the next topic in the next podcast.